notes up here that can get you guys into that, okay? But listen, hey, from the bottom of my heart, I've never done this. I hope that we're a blessing to you all tonight. We're going to take a stab at it, and we hope that we uh, can answer your questions, okay? I'm going to let Pastor Troy take it from here. Actually, time out. I, I'm, I'm pulling a Pastor Troy. I got two gift card giveaways tonight, okay? So first one, if you can go ahead and show the picture. One of them's not here tonight, but Brandon Williams. Go ahead. Come on up. And then Elijah Shaheen. Elijah Shaheen is at work. Um, so I drew a name, and it was McKenna Chambliss. There you go. Awesome. All right. So if you can just uh, throw the first question up there. Um, Let's see, how can we know there is a God, and if there is a God, who, who created him? Um, that is a good question. So uh, first one is, how can we know there, there is a God? Well, um, you know, there's, there's actually a scripture in Romans. Um, if you put that up, Dean, Romans 1, um, just, just that one scripture. Yeah. Since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, um, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. So what he's basically saying is the fact that there's a creation is evidence that there was a creator. So, like, if I came to you before, or, or I just showed you this tonight, and I said, you know, I have here an iPad, and how do we know that there was a designer or a creator? I mean, how do we know? Well, because there's an iPad, right? And so, you know, the idea that it just kind of happened, um, something this complicated, had to, obviously it had to have a designer behind it. Somebody had to design it. Somebody had to put it together. All the, all the programs that causes this thing to run. Um, if anybody here, you know, nobody could convince you that this was an accident, that there were just a bunch of parts you know, across the world and a big wind came and just kind of blew all these parts together and then BAM! You got an iPad. You know, it, it's, we, none of us would believe that, but yet the idea that there was some kind of an explosion and then we're all here. You know, that the fact of what God is saying in the book of Romans, he said, the fact that there is a creation is proof that there's a creator. And here's the thing is our universe is way more complicated than an iPad. And your, just your body, your body is way more complicated. Uh, does that mean my time's up? <laughs> uh, your body is way more complicated than that. And so, so we, we know just from creation that there's a creator, right? So now who that creator is, that's where we go to the Bible and God defines himself. So, um, so what was the second part of the question? If that's my answer to the first part. The creation says, hey, there's, there must be a God, there must be a creator because we're all here. Um, if there is a God, who created him? Well, that's, that goes to that mysterious part of the things. And I want to um, encourage each of you to have a mystery box. You, got this, you just got this box that there are some things that we just can't explain. And, and I remember being your age and asking that same question is, well, you know, when did God start? If, you know, okay, I believe there's a God because there's a creation, but when did God start? When did that all happen? Or he, who created him? Or how long has God been around? And according to the scriptures, he's just always been. He has no beginning and he has no end. And, and it's like, how, did, how does that even happen? Um, that's just one of those things that you know, kind of goes in our mystery box. I can't explain how he's always been. He's, he's God. He's self-existent. And so, you know, the pastor is saying, I don't know. He, I know this, that no one created him. And so, in fact, he says that in his word. If you can put that scripture up in Isaiah, I believe it is. Um, it says this, uh, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant who I have chosen. Go ahead. So that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. So there wasn't anyone before God. He's just always been. And so you can just start your own little mystery box. And the Bible says that one day when we see him face to face, we'll be able to ask 
some of those great questions, but there's going to be some things that we just don't understand, and we have to understand that we serve a God, we know a God, who is way bigger than we are, and, and I'm okay with that. You know, I use this all day. I couldn't tell you how this thing works. I just know I push a button and all kinds of stuff comes up and it, it makes my life better. Um, I don't know how it works. It just works. And, and we have a God that I do not understand fully. And, and certainly he's way bigger than I am, but I'm okay with that. And, um, and so that's just the second part of that question is kind of a mystery part. But. Okay, second question. All right. I try to believe in God, but why do I still have doubts? Um, you know, I think a lot of times we doubt what we don't know. And so we have to focus, when it comes to your faith, you have to focus on what do we know? What can we hold for certain? Um, and, you know, there are some things that are just, they're, proven to be true for example nobody doubts that jesus existed the person jesus um historically even historians even non-believers believe that there was this guy named jesus that walked on the planet Um, the thing about him is that there were 300 prophecies y'all stay with me there was 300 prophecies in the old testament that predicted what the messiah would be like all right if you just take eight of those prophecies Jesus fulfilled all 300. You just take eight. You say, what are the chances that one guy could fulfill 300 prophecies? That means that somebody hundreds of years before said, this is what Jesus is going to be like, or the Messiah, this is what he's going to be like. He, f- he fulfilled 300, but just to fulfill eight, here's the chances of that. Uh, put up a picture of the state of Texas, if you can, the United States. You got that? All right, look how big Texas is. Y'all see Kentucky and and Tennessee and all these types. I mean, it, it takes up a huge part of the United States, all right? That's how big Texas is. It's like 260,000 square miles, all right? Now you take Texas and you cover the state of Texas with silver dollars, all right? Y'all with me? You cover the whole state, 260,000 miles, square miles of silver dollars, two feet deep, all right, this deep. And then you take a guy and you take one quarter or one silver dollar you, you mark it, you, you paint it black, and you put it in the midst of all those, you know, it's like a hundred trillion silver dollars. And then you take a guy, and, 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 and we, we take Todd here, come here, Todd. We take Todd, and we blindfold him, all right, and we turn him loose and say, okay, now you walk in it. At some point, you're going to stop, and you're going to reach down, and you're going to pull up the one silver dollar that's marked. That's the chances. You can sit down. Wasn't that great? Let's give Todd a big hand. Wasn't that great? So, that, listen, that's the chances of Jesus being able to fulfill just eight prophecies. I mean, you say that's impossible. I mean, and that's, that's what Jesus did, but he fulfilled 300. And so what we know is you don't, you don't have to put your confidence in something that is, is just like blind faith. It's you put your faith in something that we know to be true. We know that Jesus fulfilled those prophecies. The other thing that we know, and here's what you can put your faith in, is that we know for a fact that Jesus raised from the dead. And there, there's some things in the Bible that are hard to explain. There are some things that are just, we don't, we, we don't fully grasp. But one thing that is a historical fact is that Jesus died on a cross, and three days later, he rose from the dead. And there are... There were, check this out, there were like 500 people at one time who saw him alive after he was raised from the dead. And one of the people that later saw him was this guy named Saul, who later became Paul. And he was actually a doubter. He was an unbeliever. But when he saw Jesus, it changed his world around. And so, you know, I would just encourage you to, um, you know, again, there's some things you can put in the mystery box, but you don't have to, um, as far as, doubting you don't have to doubt that there was a Jesus that he died for you and that he rose from the dead and those 500 people were willing to die to give their lives for something that they knew was true you know a lot of people will die for something that they believe to be true that's not true but these people were saying we saw him alive and we're willing to die for it you know and so and that's that's so historically you can put your confidence in that so I don't want to take up all the time.
What's, what's the next question? I don't know. Why is there evil? I got it. I got it. Come on now. I had to make sure Jake. I had to, I had to double check with him. All right. I was made for this. Make sure this. Hey, guys, aren't you glad that me and Brandon aren't preaching at you this week? Yeah, are you thankful? All right. Uh, I was honored to, to get this one because, uh, for one, a lot of you guys know, but before I believed in Jesus, I didn't believe in Jesus, right? So that's how that kind of works. And this is a question I always ask. You know, if God is this good and gracious and perfect God, then why would he create a world where there's evil? And uh, like I said, that's always a problem that I had trying to believe in God is, man, if he loves us so much, why would he let bad things happen to us? And you've got examples up there, racism, bullying, and school shootings. And uh, first of all, when you look at this question, I want you to understand whoever asked it or if it's in your, your head right now, is that the fact that you're asking it means that you're acknowledging that there's a God. If there's not a God, if there's not a judge, a ruler of all creation, then there is no good and there is no evil. If you don't have somebody to tell you what's right and wrong, then there is no right and wrong, right? If, you're, if your dad tells you not to touch the hot stove, then you can touch the hot stove. But if he tells you that's wrong, then you understand that it's wrong. Uh, so I just want you to understand that the fact that you're addressing evil means that you're addressing that there's a God and there's a Satan who, uh, who, who rules the world. And uh, I, I listened to something from this guy named Ravi Zacharias last night. He's an uh, awesome uh, apologist. And he said, four things could have happened. God could have not created the earth, and we just wouldn't be here, and then there would be no evil. God could have created a world where there's no good or evil, so there would be no evil, essentially, but there would be no good either. So you could just go run out in the streets and do whatever you wanted and be whoever you wanted, and it would, that would just be it, no good or evil. Uh, the third is a world where our only choice is good, where God creates us and uh, forces us to love him, forces us to only do good. He doesn't give us an option where you're just forced to, to love him and, and obey him. And uh, let me ask you something right now. I was talking to Pastor earlier. Anybody got a dog? A dog, right? And do you know, like, sometimes when you really want him to love you and he's not loving you, so you just kind of you kind of pick him up and you just squeeze him till his eyes pop out? And you're like, love me, dog. I've seen David do it. He's got a dog named Toby, and Toby loves him, but sometimes David just picks him up and just squeezes him real hard. But, uh, you know, that's not as good as if Toby would run up beside David and sit beside him, right? Love is so much better when it, when it comes to us, right? If I went and hugged Drew right now, Drew would, would love that. He would feel love. But if, if I told Drew, hey, come hug me right now, he'd be like, all right, but I don't really feel anything. What's the point of that? So that's, that's what God could have done. He could have said, hey, you've got to love me. You've got no option. Uh, and then there's the fourth option, which is the world we live in right now, which is the current world where there is good and there is evil. There's racism, bullying, and school shootings. And uh, what I learned is that this is the only world that God could have created where there really could be love. Because without that option, that choice to obey him or not obey him, then there would never be love. We obey him because we love him. And uh, that's why there's evil. In the beginning, there was Adam and Eve, and uh, a lot, most of you guys know this story. And, and uh, God told them not to eat from the tree of knowledge of, of good and evil. And uh, Satan comes and, and convinces them to eat of the apple. And that was the first sin. And from that point on, there's been sin in the world. That's how sin entered the world. And uh, Satan came into the world, and he's the ruler of the earth. You know, God's the king of kings. But it says that, that Satan has rule over this earth, and that's why we sin. And uh, with sin comes side effects, right? You don't take a medicine without side effects, and that's what we've got is we've got sin with side effects. And uh, nobody's perfect, but we all sin. And some people are, are more consumed by evil because they've never had that relation with God. If God's not there, if you look at, uh, what's it, Brandon, the country of Haiti you're always talking about, and they they do witchcraft and stuff, and, and I'm not saying that you know, God made it happen, but you look at Haiti, and it's, it's really bad. You know, that's where we send our missionaries to go, is to help them because it's so bad there. And they've practiced something that pleases Satan and evil, and their whole, their whole uh, land is, is, is terrible. And uh, you look at 
the U.S., and I'm not saying it's perfect, but we were a nation founded on God, and we're one of the only places you can go and be free, and I can just go down the street and go eat McDonald's, right? So that's what, that's the difference between good and evil, and that's, that's why there is evil. If God, if there wasn't evil, free will, thank you. He, God gave us free will. He gave us the option to love him or not love him, and, and for those who don't love him, then, then evil follows. Okay, the next question that we got in was, I struggle to surrender and obey God. What should I do? That's a good one, right? That one's a hard one for all of us. Doesn't matter what the age is, that's going to be something that we're going to deal with from the time we surrender and accept Jesus Christ as our Savior until he calls us home. That's just a daily uh, a battle. And what we've heard about so far is the facts of Jesus Christ and our faith in Jesus Christ and Bryce just told us about knowing good and evil. And so when we surrender our hearts to the Lord and we ask Jesus Christ to be our Savior, we become, and you all have heard it before, we become a new creation. Have you heard that? I'm born again. I'm a new creation, the Bible says. But how can a man be born again? Does he have to enter into the womb? No. When we're born again, we're born of the Spirit of God. And God's Spirit dwells in us and that makes us a new creation and so when we are a new creature that new creature within us doesn't want to do what the old sinful creature used to want to do does that make sense the the sinful person who didn't know the difference between good and bad we wanted to do whatever we wanted to we want to watch the bad movies we want to you know curse we want to uh, do drugs alcohol all of these things but when we're born again the nature that's within us is the nature of God, and that makes us a new creature. And so when we learn to walk by faith, you've heard it from your pastors and you've heard it from Pastor Troy, you have to learn to daily walk with the Lord. Um, and you will have to daily seek Him. And when you're daily seeking the Lord, you're reading your Bible, you're going to Him in prayer. And you're asking the Lord when you pray for your friends and family, which you will. But there is absolutely nothing wrong. I've heard people say, I, I, I can't pray for myself. It's not right. I need to pray for everybody else. No, you need to pray for yourself. I agree. You, you definitely need to pray for yourself because that's when you learn how to surrender. You lay your heart at the foot of Jesus. You say, and the Bible tells us he gives us a new heart. He takes out that heart of stone, that sinful nature, stone heart and gives us that heart of flesh, and that's his heart. And so a heart that's been born again takes on the nature of God, and that heart is not willingly and willfully going to say, well, I'm going to do all the things that I used to do, because that heart doesn't want to grieve God because it's the nature of God. And so if you do, and I'm not going to say none of us are ever not going to sin again because we're fallen and we're going to stumble and we're going to fall and we're going to sin. But you're not going to deliberately, as a new creature, you're not going to say, well, I can do that a hundred times if I want to because, you know, Jesus is, God is faithful for to give, forgive us, right? I mean, when we ask him to forgive us, he is faithful and we turn away from that. But when we're surrendered to God, our hearts are grieved. Because we don't want to trample on the sacrifice that Jesus made for us when we are truly born again. Because we know the price that he had to pay. And that's, um, you know, a broken heart doesn't mean that um, just everything makes you sad and you're going to cry all the time. And I've got a broken heart, right? You hear people that are broken. A broken heart is the shattering of your self-will. The Bible talks about, you know, it's better to let jesus christ fall on you and break you and break your will then when he comes again someday for the rock to just fall on us and crush us and so when we are broken we humble ourselves before god and we seek him daily we seek the holy spirit to give us the direction uh, that we need a humble heart is broken before god and it says that when we are humble before him is that god what is it uh when the proud exalts themselves, they are brought down. They are humbled. But when a humble heart stands before God, he will lift that person up and raise them up. And so he'll give you the direction. You have to seek him daily. He will give you the direction. You seek him through his word. And the more you learn how to trust his word 
and to listen to his voice, the more that you will want to do the will of God. And so, you know, and Jesus, when it talks about surrender and obeying God, we all know the story of the Garden of Gethsemane before Jesus had to go to the cross. And Jesus was there at, at that point crying out to God, God, take this cup from me. Do you think that he was saying, I don't want to, I don't want to die for these people? Do you think that's what he was crying, drops of blood? Well, he didn't, wasn't crying because he knew he was going to die. He was crying because he knew he was crying out to God, saying, Lord, if there's any way, take this cup from me. Because he knew that when he went to that cross, he was going to take your sin, and your sin, and your sin, and my sin. Jesus Christ had to go to that cross to take on the whole sin of this world. And the Bible says that God cannot dwell where there is sin. And so when Jesus was on that cross, he knew the Father would have to turn away from him. And he would, for the first time ever in creation, he would be separated from his Father. That's what Jesus did. And that's why he said, my Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus surrendered his will. So that doesn't mean that surrendering your will is a bad thing. And it's going to be hard sometimes. It's hard to surrender your will. It's hard to give up the things that you may want or the dreams that you may have. But when you surrender your will to God, his plan is perfect. His, his will for you is good and perfect. And so you can trust him. And when you learn to trust him, you will begin to obey him. And so that's what it is to surrender. Even when you don't understand, when your faith grows through reading his word and in prayer, you will learn to trust and obey him and surrender. Um, why, why do I want to harm myself and even have suicidal thoughts at times? Um, you know, I think, you know, going back to what Bryce said, is that we, um, we do have an enemy. And the Bible makes it real, very clear that, um, that the devil seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. And so that's, that's not God's plan for your life. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So, so know this, when you have thoughts to harm yourself or even have suicidal thoughts uh, to take your own life, that is not from God. That is not God's will for your life. That's not God's plan. And, and honestly, I don't think that's even your flesh. Um, because generally, if we hurt ourselves, the natural thing to do is we want to avoid pain. Right? That's our natural tendency. If I, if I hit my thumb with a hammer and it hurts, I'm like, I think I'll try my finger too. I mean, it's, it's, I, I, that pain is something that I want to, naturally, I want to avoid. So I'll, I'll just say this, that you're a spirit, you're a soul. You're a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And so when it comes to, you know, something like suicide, what I believe is that all three are involved. So you're under a spiritual attack. Your spirit is under attack. The devil wants you to take your own life. He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. So he will speak to you. He, he's real, and demons are real, and they will try to convince you to, to take your own life. But the, the Bible said the devil's a liar, and he's, he's the father of lies. And so he'll try to convince you that there's no hope, that um, it can't get any better than it is. You know, why even, you know, the world will be better off without me. You know, I just did a funeral of a young man, Winston, just last week. And, um, you know, 16 years old and, and believed that, um, that it was, you know, the world was better without him or, or something. And, and listen, can I just tell you guys, nothing is that bad that you need to take your own life. Um, we all go through things. And, you know, there's a brother here tonight who's battling cancer and has been going through it for a while now. And, you know, and he, he would tell you that, you know, hey, he's looking forward to going to heaven, but it's going to be on God's time, right. you know, and but the enemy will try to tell you there's no hope and you don't, you know, you're not worthy. And so so there's a spiritual battle, but also there's also um, emotions that get involved and, um, and you start to believe these lies, you know, maybe things that other people have said or you, you know, you, you have these lies in your mind. And so you have to feed your mind good things. You know, and the Bible says whatever things are good and pure and, you know, just fill your mind with the word of God because that will help you to think right. Um, but then also there, there are, we are physical beings. And so um, mental illness is real. You know, it, it's real. And just like you can have a heart problem, you know, or, a, a, 
your blood pressure be out of whack or you know right now my knee hurts you know um, we have physical things and and so your brain is part of your body and and there's times that 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 something can just be off there a chemical imbalance and these things so we don't discount those things but what we know is that um, Jesus is a healer and so he can heal you spirit soul and body and so what I would just say is if you're if you're harming yourself you know you need to let somebody know um, or you have this this tendency to harm somebody and uh, as pastors we're generally going to focus on the spiritual side but but um, you know I would just say hey that's um, that's not natural and it's not God's will for your life so reach out to one of these adults here and we'll do what we can to help and and know that there's a spiritual battle you need to realize that you're under attack and uh, you're a child of God and if he can take you if the devil is like you know I may not be I can't get God I can't take him out but I'll go after his kids he knows he can't take out God but he'll come after his kids and you're one of God's children and so you need to know who you are and you need to you got to learn how to fight you know if there was a kid at school and he was pushing you around you know after a while you're going to learn how to fight or go to somebody who's bigger than you and you know you got to help me fight this and so that's what we want to do you're in a battle if you're having these things you're in a spiritual battle and you need help fighting and so en- enroll some get you a posse father son holy spirit and uh and then uh, get you uh <laughs> And then get some other people and say, hey, I need you to help me. Teach me how to, how to fight this thing. Just don't try to do it alone. That's what he wants to do. He wants to isolate you. And uh, remember this. It's the banana that leaves the bunch that gets peeled. All right? You think about that. All right. Wow. Man, it's, it stinks going last. I'm going to have to piggyback on all of you, you guys. But uh, how many of y'all know Bryce is a copycat, man? I've told him about that with Zach. Yeah, and, and I had that down to, to speak on it. Um, the next question, man, took my answer. It was, how can I have a relationship with God? And, and we'll break that down to two questions. And then how can I hear him speak? And so to go back on what was supposed to be mine, if we look at the four themes of how God could create the earth or, or create us, Um, there's only four ways and I I encourage you to test that but there's non-existent so let's let's refer to the dog okay there's not a dog there's a robot dog or there then there's just a dog that will come up and pee on your leg and then get up in your lap and lick you you know what I'm saying so you got immorality which isn't true love okay that nothing's wrong that's not true love as a dad I can tell you guys that with my two kids um, having a robot dog come to you and making him do everything you want him to do is not true love and non-existent. If you're not existing, that is not any way that you can love him. So the only way, starting at creation, that the Lord could make it was to build the earth and give the one tree off limits to show that you have a free will and a choice to follow God. As, as men, as humans, we have broke that, and that's where sin has came, come into the world. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Said to give that. So how can I have a relationship with God? It's realizing in Romans, it says we all fall short of the glory of God. And it's realizing that we are a sinner, but that God came down. He brought his son Jesus down to this earth to bridge that gap for us. So, real quick, eyes on me, okay? Eyes on me, phones up. So, it's realizing that we fall short and that we need a Savior. And how many of us, raise your hand if you've sinned, okay? And if you're not raised your hand, you're sinning right now, okay? <laughs> um, we have all sinned. And, and to do with that, Jesus came on this earth to live a life that we should have and died a death that we should have. And how many of us knows that the resurrection, like Pastor Troy said, it was seen by over 500 people, and there were even people that died for that, for their faith. So they've seen this guy. You guys are not dying for something that you just hear or that you just think. It's knowing it. So admitting that we're a sinner, that we've all fallen short, but then it's believing historically that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he was born of a virgin, and that he, he came down here to live a life that we couldn't and died a death that we should have. 
But three days later, he rose again. And like Pastor Troy was speaking, all of these prophecies are impossible to come true. But they have all come true. I want you guys to realize this. If you're struggling with your faith tonight, don't go off of every single page of this book. Go off of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? Because that's known. It's a historical fact. Now, this book is true because of what Jesus proved was proven to us okay um, and also the last thing is realizing and confessing that he is Lord and Savior so it's by sitting there realizing that he has come to save us but also we're going to give him lordship over our life we're putting him first okay repent means to turn from so I'm going to brother Jay well I repent and go to Drew I'm, I'm turning and going this way so when I was 16 years old, I'd done all that. You know, I read the quarter, I'd done all that, but it didn't fully penetrate my heart because I never put God first. And it was more of me being scared of hell, and I think you should have a fear for that, but it wasn't of, in all of who he is. And can I say this, that this is a love story to us. That's what it is. It's a love story to us, and it is by piece by piece he doesn't want you to get it all day one he wants you to have to go through it and find the treasures that he has for you and the blessings that he has for you okay so when I was 21 that's when I got into a bad jet ski accident and that's when I almost uh, died out on the lake okay that's when I always admitted that I was a sinner I always believed in Jesus historically but that's when I truly made a direction of repentance and said God please save me and Lord if you do I will die for you I will lose my life for you like it says in the scriptures and what it's talking about is my desires my dreams okay and he, he wants some of your dreams to come true but he wants it online with his will does that make sense repentance is a big deal um, so the second part is how can we hear God speak so pastor said that we're spirit, body, and soul. And I want to mix that question in with I had one of you guys say, um, how come when I fast I still can't hear from the Lord? And that's a great, great question. And we're doing our, our church fast here. And I want you to know this, that we all have been fasting up here and this week. And it's not like the gates of heaven have came open to me. Okay, some of it's just a day-by-day, step-by-step, faith by faith deal and I have never heard God say Brandon I've never heard that I've always I've always heard it I've never audibly heard the Lord okay and there's some people that probably have but I've always heard him in my spirit I've always heard him in this word and I've always heard him through other people so like the prophetic okay so God can use other people to speak to you God downloads his Holy Spirit in you when you believe in him and he speaks to you and walks with you day by day and this word right here it says that God breathed this word he says in John I am the word so when you get up in the mornings and you want to read your Bible literally open it up and speak it out loud and God is speaking okay so um, to end on that with the fasting question this is where I'm at I realize now today how strong Brandon's body is, how much I need food, how much I need water, and also how uh, my soul needs entertainment, TV, social media. I see all of that. So when you say fast, uh, my first thought is, are, are, is it a complete fast? Because sometimes it takes a minute. There was a time where I had to sit another chair out in front of me, uh, we heard a speaker that said this, and I copied him. For, and it took me like 20 days, 21 days, until I started hearing the Lord's voice speak. So sometimes it's just him testing to see how, how long we're going, how, how much we're in. Does that make sense? How long we're in. All right, the next question is how can I keep from messing up over and over again? Um, To relate that Jesus said this when he come back and and he rose from the dead the resurrection 
and, and he was still on this earth, and, and all these people seen him, he told them, he said, it's best that I go away for the helper to come. And he, Jesus knew, how many of us would like Jesus every single day with us? Raise your hand. Amen. In a sense, through his Holy Spirit, we have that. Okay? And I know that it's a lot easier because, um, and, and I've even told you guys this, the world looks at it a lot of times that we're, we're humans having a spiritual experience when really we're spirits having a humanity experience. Okay? So you will live forever. Um, and it's easy when, you know, if I'm walking every single day with Drew, okay, and, and we're walking and doing our, doing our thing, but what's that, what's that do to Abby? You know, the disciples, what I guess I'm saying is the disciples, they were good with Jesus, and they wanted Jesus to stay here. I would too. He was directing them. But Jesus knew for everyone in the world, to know who he was and have a chance for eternity in heaven that he had to give the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can be in each and every single one of us. And it says the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is in you who believe in him. So you have a powerful spirit that I would encourage you every single day to go to. And I would speak to the Holy Spirit. It says in the Bible that he's a person. Okay, so we don't have to just look at God like he's some huge creator in the sky like I did most of my life, when I realized that him, that God the Father and Jesus are in heaven, but he has sent the comforter, the helper, the advocate to me, to live through me, to use me. And guys, he will help you find out your purpose for life. A couple pra uh, practical ways is check out who you're hanging out with. Um, if your friends are taking you down the wrong path, you show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Okay, so for me, for instance, I believed in Jesus, and uh, at 16, again, I believed in Jesus. I didn't submit my will or uh, submit him to me, um, but guess what? I was still hanging around all these people that were going around, running around, drinking, smoking, doing things they shouldn't do, okay? And then I was expecting to get blessed when, in all reality, I'm talking a long time, I'm almost done, in all reality... This is, everything that's in this word is blessings. Everything against this word is cursings. So I'm saying I believe in Jesus, but I'm going out and drinking. Well, I can't be blessed because the word of God says I can't be blessed. So for me, my life change happened when I realized the power of the Holy Spirit, realized that he was a person, and I shifted and got some different friends in my life. I started listening to some different music, and I started watching some different TV shows and getting away from some stuff um, that I need to get away from. Okay? Uh, do you want to give them a chance to ask any questions? I think we have plenty of time. Um, if anyone in here has any questions or, or want to to go off of one of them questions, would you just raise your hand and I'll pass the mic to you. Um, Missy will come down if, if you have any questions. Anybody? Be bold. Be strong and bold. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why doesn't God have pride? Uh, that's yeah mystery box but um now why didn't god have pride um you know the his nature is love you know i mean the bible says god is love you know not just god is loving but he is love he is that's who he is is he has no sin of course pride is sinful and um his nature is just love and love is not proud it it's um in its purest sense so you know that i don't know that that you know if i was god i'd be proud but uh, he's not, so just be glad that I'm not God, so, right?
Okay, so it's not relating to any of the questions we asked, but can you lose your salvation? <laughs> All right. Um, the word lose kind of indicates that it's an accident. Okay? So I've never lost anything on purpose. Have you? You've lost something on purpose? Like, like I, I lost my keys on purpose, you know, or I lost my cell phone. You know, we, when we lose something, it's, it indicates that it was an accident. And so do I believe you can accidentally lose your salvation? No. It's a gift, okay? It was a gift to you. You didn't earn it, and so you don't lose it. There is uh, scriptures, though, that talk about leaving. You know, again, Bryce talked about the fact that we have a free will. And so um, God makes us with a free will. You have the choice to follow Jesus as your Savior. You know, and the real question is, is after you become a Christian, do you still have a free will? You know, can you leave Jesus if you want to? And so that's really the, the, the real big question as far as, um, I think the, maybe the question is, is if I sin one too many times, am I going to lose my salvation? No, I don't, I don't believe that. Because you're not saved by your works, you're also not kept by your works. You're saved by grace, that means God did it for you, through faith, right? So you, you put your faith in Jesus, that's what saves you. And that's also what keeps you. You're kept the same way you're saved. So you're saved by grace through faith. You're also kept by grace. God's keeping you. He, he started it in you. He's going to keep you all the way to the end. He won't let you go. But it's through faith. And so really, you know, if you choose, say, I don't want Jesus anymore. I don't want to go to heaven. I don't want to be with God. Is he going to force you to go against your will that's, that's really the, the thing. So, again, losing salvation, I don't think so. Leaving salvation, it seems like there's a, there's a warning there. So, I don't know. That, that's kind of, I could go a lot deeper than that, but that's kind of surface level answer there. So, does that help? Okay. A lot of these questions they deal with with doubt you know we we ask why does God make stuff happen is God real who created him we have doubt and uh, I want you to realize that that God also said that he would send miracles and signs of that he is real and uh, there are there are people in this crowd around you maybe it's not happened to you or maybe you haven't realized it but miracles happen like every day they happen it's not it's maybe not him throwing water up and the red sea and making it split but sometimes he heals people with cancer you know sometimes he does real miracles and it's not just something that you see on tv it happens to real people around you so if you ever are really struggling with your faith go ask one of these people because they're going to be proud and happy to tell you that jesus did a miracle in their life and uh, he is good and he is faithful and uh, we will be sure to tell you of that so uh, ask the people around you. Ask them. Say, hey, has he, have you ever seen a miracle? Has he ever done something in your family's life? Challenge them and uh, see what happens. And if the, you want the band to come up, get ready. Okay. Um, and also, real quick uh, story on me. When I was 16 years old, I was, I was dating a girl. And, you know, I thought that I was in love and that's who I was going to marry. Um, and, and she she's a good girl um, but it we ended up splitting okay and this is listen I was 16 so I was right where you're at 15 16 years old um, we ended up splitting up and my prayer for 150 days half a year was Lord please put us back together please put us back together please put us back together and I didn't know why a good father would keep that from happening so I know that I was a little selfish there, but I looked at him like, Lord, why aren't you making this come together? Um, one night, I was at a buddy's house, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this thing out. I'm going to try your will. And so I got down on my knees, and my buddy's, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, my buddy's sleeping. Uh, I get down at the end of his bed, and I said, Lord, 
I said, I don't understand this, and I don't know why, um, and I don't know why she chose that, you know. But I said, I, today, tonight, I'm going to choose to go with your will. Your will be done over my life, Jesus, and, and please bless me with my spouse. And I said it just like that. Please bless me with my spouse because I'm tired of running around. And so that's 3 o'clock in the morning, and we were playing a district baseball game. Coach Stallings, raise your hand. I'm giving you a shout-out, my boy. Uh, we were playing a district baseball game, and we were over at Madisonville, or Dawson. We were playing Madisonville. And we came back after the game. This is the next day. We came back after the game, and I was sitting at, at Sonic with, with a couple buddies. And I seen this girl come up that I've never seen before in my life. Okay, she's from a different county. Never seen her before. And it might have been the Sonic lights, but it was like, there she is. Man. And I was like, thank you, Lord. And listen, I looked at my buddies and I said, I'm going to marry that girl. And they looked at me and they said, man, you, you don't even know her. Who is she? You don't know if she's talking to someone. You don't know what's... I said, I'm going to marry her. And so they were bullying me that night telling me to go talk to her I said man I know what I'm doing give me a second all right I had to get my my update on her and see how she is okay but then listen two days later I, I contact her she broke up with her boyfriend about the same time and today I'm sitting here four years in the marriage I've got two kids and I'm still with my sonic girl okay <laughs> and we hey, and we stop and get some slushies every once in a while just to reminisce so listen, I, I want you to realize this at your age. You're not going to understand everything. You're, you're not going to know why things happen. Our Pastor Troy's age. Uh, uh, ooh. So, <laughs> so listen, this is what I want you to do tonight. I'd like everybody to stand. And we're going to play one more song, okay? And I want you to realize, listen. We're almost done. Listen. Eyes, connect with me. I want you to realize tonight that it might be this. You don't know why the relationship happened. You don't know why this health issue happened. You don't know why my family's going through this problem. Um, it can be finances, relationships. It can be anything. Maybe that I'm just having a hard time in school. And, and why would God do this to me? Okay, I want you to realize that he's a huge God, that he's working behind the scenes. And listen, if I would have married, nothing's wrong with that girl, but if I would have married her, I'd be sitting here today missing out on the treasure that he gave me. Okay? So listen, we're going to sing this last song. If you want to come forward for any reason, we want the altars to be for you. It doesn't have to be tonight. Uh, I don't want to go forward because I'm afraid everybody's going to think I'm getting saved tonight. You can be saved. I go to the altar all the time. If you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time and you realize that maybe you've always admitted that you were, uh, hold it, hold it, hold it. You always realized that you were a sinner and you always believed in Jesus, but you've never really made that turn in life and you've never allowed him to be number one in your life. Tonight you have that opportunity as well. If you want healing tonight, then I ask that you come forward. Before we get going, brother, can you come forward? Can you come forward? Yeah. And I'd like to pray for him. And I want you guys to lay your hands out. And I want you to pray for him. And I want you to act like this is someone in your family. And I want you to lift it up all in one voice. Hands out and praying for our brother tonight. Father God, we praise you, God. We love you, Lord. I pray for my brother sitting here tonight, God, and I ask that a healing will fall upon him, Lord. I ask that you healing from his toes to his head, God. God, you are a good, good father, and we praise you for that. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you have your way, God. God, let your 